Okay, a little work break. Just up here at a cottage actually in Quebec. It's a pretty nice one, it's like six hours away. Me and a couple of buddies, we're just doing a bunch of work up here. They have their own stuff to do, I have my own stuff to do, and we're just kind of grinding it out, get away from the city. It's a pretty nice cottage, it's got like a little jacuzzi and stuff. It's on a lake. Here's the lake actually, let me show you. I'm just walking down this path here. It's kind of muddy, so I'm just trying not to slip. I actually thought I would try to do a question in this kind of format. Just give me a sec here. Look at this frozen lake. Look how quiet it is. Nobody here right now. It's just me. I'm just hoping I don't fall in this lake right now. It's like fully frozen. So yeah, anyway, let's, uh, let's try this question. So let, let's say we have a function two over three to the power of four x minus 12. And we're asked to state the transformations that are done on the parent function one over three to the power of x in order to get to the function we have now, two over three to the power of four x minus 12. So in general, uh, an exponential, give me a sec here, woo -hoo, that was close. I feel better now, I'm actually like walking on snow in the middle of the lake, but anyway. Now, as we know, as we've gone through in previous videos, an exponential function, b to the power of x, just any exponential function, once we put it through transformations, what is the general format of it going to be? Well, it's going to be y equals a times b to the power of k bracket x minus d plus c, right? That's the general transformation format. So what we got to do is we got to try to take the function that we have, and we have to try to put it in that same general transformation format. Because then we can get the transformation values, the a, k, d, and c value, and then we could state what the transformations are. So that's gonna be the challenge. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we can do is there's like that two in the numerator, and we could split that out of the function. We could take that out, and so what we would end up having then is we take the two out, and then we'll have a bracket, and then there will be a one left in the numerator. And so we'll have one over three to the power of four X minus 12. And so what we can do from here is we can actually take that one and we could put an exponent on it because one to the power of anything we know is just gonna equal one. And so what if we take that one and we rewrite it as one to the power of that same exponent that's in the denominator? the 4x minus 12. So what we'll have now in that bracket is one to the power of 4x minus 12, which is just still gonna be one, over three to the power of 4x minus 12. And now what's nice about that is we know that if we have a numerator and denominator to that same exponent, we can take the whole fraction to that exponent. So just in general, if we have like a to the power of y over b to the power of y, we can rewrite that as a over b to the power of y, right? So we can do the same thing now with that bracket. So we can take the exponent out, quote unquote, and we can rewrite it as one over three to the power of four x minus 12. And so what we have now is we have two times one over three to the power of four x minus 12. Right, so now we're just getting closer and closer to that general transformation format. Now, what's missing? What do we have left to do? Well, notice that the exponent in the general transformation format, it's k bracket x minus d. But our exponent, we have four x minus, oh shit, someone's on a sea do there. Look at this. Oh, I wish I had my, uh, I wish I had my telephoto left. Yeah, that was sick. That was crazy. Yeah, I got a wide lens here, so I couldn't really zoom in on that. But anyway, so back to the question. So we have uh, in the exponent, we could take out that four, right? We could factor it out. And so we'd be left with four bracket X minus three. And now notice that that exponent is in that K bracket X minus D format. Now there's also that plus C at the, but the plus C we actually don't have in our specific function. There's nothing there. Right, so we can write just plus zero. So the C value in this case is zero, meaning that there's not gonna be any vertical shift up and down. 
right? And so now we have the function in the general transformation format, we can get the transformation value. So notice that the A value is two, the K value is four, the D value is three, and then the C value is zero. And then from here, it's really easy to state the transformations because those transformation values are basically universal for any function that we're using. So the fact that we're dealing with an exponential function or if we're dealing with a quadratic or whatever, it doesn't really matter at this point. And so what does an A value of two mean? Well, it means that there's a vertical stretch by a factor of two. And then the K value of four means that there's a horizontal compression by one over four. Remember, you gotta flip the K value. The D value of three, positive three, means that the function has been shifted by three to the right, by three units to the right. And then a C value of zero, we don't even have to mention anything about that. Basically, there is no vertical shift up or down, right? No vertical translation up or down. And that's pretty much it. So really, with uh, the function we we're given, we first had to take it, convert it, to have that base function, one over three to the power of x, get your transformation values, and then you could just state your transformation.